Hi guys, welcome back for another chicken special. My name is Robert Höck and today it's all about chicken coops or hen houses. I want to introduce you to six different hen houses, six different chicken coops. Some of them are mobile homes, some of them are homes for chicks, others are for bantam chickens. I want to start the video with our own chicken coops here on the Crown Hill Ranch. And after that, I want to show you three other different possibilities, varieties of chicken coops from other people here in the center of Europe. And so, um, yeah, let's start with our biggest chicken coop, the one for the egg laying flock. There are more than 60 hens living in it and also two roosters. So it's a very big coop. And it also has some special gimmicks like a thundal system for the chickens. And yeah, let's start with that. Our coop for the laying flock definitely is something special. It is built under a bridge or you also may say a ramp for tractors. The tractors should bring hay into the second floor of the cow barn and so this ramp was used as a chicken coop. My parents decided this nearly 20 years ago because there came a law where you were not allowed to keep chickens in the cow barn anymore and so the chickens had to move out and they are now in this extension under the tractor ramp. And you also have seen the tunnel. This tunnel is because there is no direct access to the meadows around the chicken coop and so we made this tunnel system. Candle you can open the slider door and then the hands can run out through the tunnel to their runs. The tunnel contains five segments. Each of the segments is approximately one meter long. And you can easily remove them when the tractor should pass there or the cows have to cross the road. When building such dandel segments, it's very important to make them big and broad enough. Two hands should be allowed to walk side by side. And as you can see, in some cases, three of them can walk side by side. We have Amrocks, French Morans, Alchdivers, Exchequer, Leghorns, Silverwoods and Fourworks and also some Sunshuck Crowers and Brabant Cons in our flock. All hands of every breed learn this bundling system very quick and we haven't had any problems. Our laying flock has two alternating pastures which were used flexible so it's very helpful that the dandel segments are portable we can replace the dandel to whatever run we use and so the other run which is not in use can regrow the grass can recover and so the hens always have fresh feeding so let's now take a closer look to the coop itself while going to the big coop we also pass our downpipe feeding system which is easily accessible to us because you just have to open the flap to fill in the chicken grain and foods. You even can use different grains or feeds for different pipes. But however you understand how this system functions it's important to see it from the other side from the chicken point of view. So I close it and we now go inside. When passing the hen house, you come at first to a small hallway with some sliders where you have direct access to the nesting boxes. But let's take a look to the downpipes first. This is the downpipe feeder system with eight downpipes. It's not helpful to use more pipes with this size of the flock because it's important that the food, the grain keeps fresh and so if you use more pipes the, the grains will stay too long in the pipes. When taking a look around you will of course recognize the horse feeder nesting boxes. I've learned that these horse feeders are clever nesting boxes many years ago and since then we all use them here on the farm on every chicken breed even at the breeding flocks. There are more than enough nesting boxes for every hen but they always use the ones at the right side. The one at the left sides are abundant. Let's now take a closer look to the feeding system and how it functions. 
because our hands have different sizes we have to put this wooden piece there and so they can sit on it while Rooster Excalibur watches them. <laughs> while most pipes include grain in the right pipe is mineral feed. That's very important for the flock to keep on laying eggs with thick healthy shells. The most important furniture for the chickens in the night is the roosting birch. We use different roosting birches in different kinds of timber with different measurements and we also use a flexible ladder system so that the heavier breeds such as the amrocks or the bicamarans can use the lower places on the roosting birch ladder and the smaller breeds such as Exchequer Leghorn and the Old Styros can use the higher places and they do so. There should be enough space that the chickens can roost every night in various groups because they have a very special social behavior and in such a big flock they then to roost in various groups. Yeah, and these flexible roosting birches, these ladders are also very useful when we put out the litter of the hen house because then they can be removed and there is enough place that you can remove the litter and put in new and fresh straw. Let's go back to the outside. This is the front view from the beginning again. And this is very important in winter times because when there is snow and the chickens cannot go out because of the chicken lockdown, we always have chicken lockdowns in winter because of bird flu. And yeah, then they need this sheltered and roofed place to are allowed to go out because yeah I don't know how it is elsewhere in the world but in Austria the chickens were not allowed to go on the outside for three months this winter which was very hard for them and if we would not have this extension there with the roof they would not have any chance to go out and get themselves some fresh air. Of course the hens are also allowed to use this special area during summer times without bird flu lockdowns but however they prefer the opposite side with the green meadows. In winter they get hay and straw in this place and so they are a little bit busy. So now I just step over the dundle and go to our next chicken coop I want you to introduce to. The one for the Bavarian Bantam breeding flock. The Bavarian Bantam is my personal favorite of all chicken breeds because it's very rare but it's also very colorful. This chicken coop has been built by Austrian YouTuber Andreas and it also includes these nesting boxes from horse feeders, portable roosting birches and it again has enough space for this little flock. Light only comes into this hen house during the glass door because there are no windows. This chicken coop for the Bavarian Bantams is a special creation from Austrian chicken YouTuber, poultry YouTuber Andreas Stöckelhuber. I helped him a little bit while building this coop and we insulated it very good. That's because it's very harsh here in winter. We have minus 20 degrees. However, it was a lot of fun to set up this coop back then with Andreas. In the first year, this coop was standing in a totally different area on the farm and then we decided to put it to another place. But that's also possible with these chicken coops because they are standing on feet and so you can remove them with a tractor. I also decided to give the Bavarian Bantams a special roofed area on the outside where they can hide from the rain and yeah they love this place and it's also very good when it's sunny and hot. There is an automatic chicken door with sliders and the chickens are also allowed to go underneath the coop. It's also a good thing because they love to hide there when predatory birds are flying over their run. 
In comparison to the run of the laying flock, the Bavarian Bantam flock run is very green. That's because such small chicken breeds are not able to, yeah, destroy so much of the hen garden, if I may say so. I have used uh, a lot of different plants and scrubs for them, which are not poisonous, for example, spireas, piceas, vigalas and roses. And yeah, so they have a very lovely area there where they can roam free. We have a big problem with birds of prey here in Austria, especially in Tyrol and the mountainous farms. And that's why I only let the Bavarian Bantams roam free on the farm when I'm there to keep an eye on them. But they really love to. And one thing which makes these coops special is the wall with the signs. These are signs my German fans from the German chicken series Happy Hoon send it to me and I love to put them on this wall of the chicken house. Yeah, as I mentioned before, we had three months of bird flu lockdown for our chickens and yeah, that was when I decided do not let the Bavarian Bantams in their very small chicken coop because it's big enough during summer when they can run free, but in a lockdown they do not have enough space. And so I decided last winter to put them in our third chicken coop. This is our chicken coop, which is normally used for raising young chicks, young hens. And I arranged it that the Bavarian Bantams could live there during winter. There they have a lot of space for scratching in the straw. They have roosting birches, also natural ones from fir trees and yeah. My Bavarian Bantam chickens really are like pets for me and I always wanted them to be in the best possible condition. I do a dime skip now and we have a look what this coop looks like when there are young chicks in it. These are our chicks from this year and they have a lot of space with this coop. These boxes are normally for snakes, for pythons. They were used when the chicks are one week old, but there is also the first station from three stations, which is the hatching incubator and it's hided here. This incubator functions very well. All chickens on our farm are raised by ourselves. That's very important to us because we want to do it as organic as possible. And we love to raise our own laying stock as well. And yeah, there we had Barnefelder eggs, uh, Silverwood eggs, Exchequer Lacron eggs, Forework eggs and some others. And um, hatching always works great here in this special area. It's always nice to watch the young chicks while hatching from the egg. So when the chicks are hatched and finally dry and can go out from the incubator, they spend the first week of their lives in these snake boxes. As I said before, the snake boxes are very functional, very handy for that use. And then, and then when they are bigger, they can go into the third station, which is the big racing coop. And there they always have a lot of fun. They are allowed to play, to roam around, to fly, in our experience, it's really important to keep the chicks busy because when they are busy, they don't do things like featherbacking or such. Cannibalism is no problem here on our farm. The chicks can even scratch in the soil or in the sand. They have these dust beds there, which is also important for the adult hens, but we also allow the young chicks to make a dust bed and scratch a little bit around. Chicks can also be allowed to use roosting birches. That's very helpful later when they learned it in a very young age. I always get messages from people who tell me that their hens are not using the roosting birches. And then I have to tell them that's because they did not learn to use the birches when they were young. I need names for these two girls. They are Adam Zarema. There's a third one, which is a little bit shyer. And I also have the blue rooster from the Ceramas. I keep them for my nephew because he's now 
one and a half year old and has some interest in chickens and I think the AM Ceramas are the perfect cute breed for him to start with chicks. But now also the shy hen comes to me. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Isn't, she <cute? laughs> Isn't she cute? Yeah, so let's now go to the next chicken coop. Oh, <laughs> the Zerama chicks are so calm, friendly and trustful. I totally adore them. So if you have any name suggestions for them, feel free to leave a comment. So now it's time to leave our farm. We already have seen our through most important chicken coops, hen houses here on the farm. And now it's time to visit some other chicken farmers and poultry fanciers. Now this is a lovely organic and natural garden in Upper Austria from Austrian poultry fancier David. David breeds Brabant chickens and yeah, in his garden he has several chicken coops for different breeds and for different ages of the chicks and he has also built this mobile portable chicken coop by himself. What I first recognized were the big places for air quality, for fresh air, which is very important in summer. He made these windows without glass, then he opens it for me and we can take a closer look to the inside. There are approximately three months old Brabanta chicks and also some Marans and some crossbreeds. They are <laughs> very curious towards me and yeah, it's easy to put out the litter from this coop because you can open this flap. David also uses a sliding chicken door, but let's now take a look to the back side of the coop, because there David has access to the nesting boxes. He also has built himself some egg trays and so the hands can back the eggs. Yeah, and this is a closer look to the portable roosting birches. They are also removable when putting out the litter from this coop. In general, all of David's chicken runs are in very good condition. There is fresh grass everywhere and there are shelters and structures for the chickens. Very few chickens live here in relation to the area and that's the reason why everything is so green, nice and lovely. And I haven't mentioned it before, but I totally adore this breed in this buff spangled variety, the Brabanta chicken from the Netherlands. You may also have recognized this breed in my video about crested chicken breeds. So thank you David for showing me around and now it's time to go to another poultry fancier. Well, now this is the beautiful woodland and also chicken garden from Saxonian poultry fancier Christian. He lives in the Ore Mountains close to the Czech border region. The Ore Mountains have a very cold and harsh climate and so Christian had to build a chicken coop with a big roofed area. As I mentioned before, such roofed areas are always a good idea when you start with chickens and are blending your chicken coop. It's not only because of the weather, it's also because of the bird flu situation. But okay, that may depend on where you live. But as it is in Austria and Germany where we have bird flu lockdowns every winter, please blend in such roofed areas for your hands because otherwise they might not be allowed to go outside for several weeks. However, Christian's chickens are very lucky. They have a beautiful structured roof run here with twigs, with wood blocks, with rocks, with a sand floor and so they are allowed to have a good time and spend a healthy chicken life. Christian also uses these 
horse feeders as nesting boxes and he also had some which are fitting in perfectly well in the corners. Isn't that lovely? Flexible roosting birches with mite traps at the side and a big window which allows that a nice light come, comes in this cube. These are other things which make that a perfect chicken palace. Christian keeps bantam varieties of chicken breeds and bigger chicken breeds in a mixed flock and he has no problem with that, that's because there is enough space in relation to the group size. There are for example bantam sussex in porcelain, frizzled Peking bantams, laced wire dots and some Königsberger laying hybrids. Now let's go back to Austria for number 6 for the last beautiful chicken coop I want to show you in this video. It's in Lower Austria. This is the big chicken farm of Austrian poultry breeder Johannes. Johannes has built this coop for 12 different breeding flocks. So he has many different breeds of chickens there and they are all egg laying chickens or dual purpose chicken breeds of ancient times. And you already have seen these French Marans roaming free there and you may also have recognized the roofed outdoor areas for every flock. We will take a closer look to the big diversity of chicken breeds Johannes is breeding here later, but now at first I want to show you the inside of this fantastic chicken coop. Johannes shows us in the inside where you will at first recognize a big hallway. And everything in this big chicken coop is symmetrical. There are six coops on the left side and six coops on the right side. Every breeding flock, in this case it is an older flock, has roosting birches, nesting boxes and yeah. It's very strict, but the chickens have everything they need. This is another beautiful breeding flock of the German Feverole chicken in the salmon color variety which is uh, close to the Wheaton and there are silver double laced Barnefelders. You might have seen them before in my video about the best egg laying chicken breeds from back in the days. <laughs> yeah and as I mentioned all chickens have the access to their roofed outdoor run. This is the outdoor run in case of the Barnefelders. And yeah, let's now have a closer look to the various chicken breeds which are living in this system chicken coop. <coughs> Next door to the Barnefelders is this beautiful breeding flock of German Bielefelder chickens living. And the Bielefelders are very big, friendly and trustful birds. They are good for both egg and meat production and therefore they also have been in my video about dual purpose chicken breeds. So if you hadn't seen it till now, you might do so later. As Austrian Johannes also has of course the most important chicken breed of all times from Austria and that is the Sölmdale chicken. In this golden wheat and color variety, where the roosters are much darker in comparison to the hens. At some times of the year when Johannes has the time to keep an eye on them, he lets his chicken flocks run free. For example, this is the breeding flock of the black French La Flèche chicken. Or this is the breeding flock of the South American Rampress, the Araucana chicken. It's always wonderful to watch the breeding flocks in the green grass. You know, I do prefer that for my videos. Another very beautiful breed, one of my all-time favorites, the Sandjak longcrower. Johannes was one of the first to bred Sandjaks in Austria. And these are again the silver double laced Barnefelders roaming free. Johannes also breeds sheep. And the Barnefelders are calm, friendly and trustful amongst the sheep. 
then these are the German Favorolets again when they roamed free when we made a portrait about this breed uh, approximately five years ago it was very early in the year and here are the Olofs again they are so beautiful I love this breed um, years ago I had Olofs by myself and I loved them because of their good winter egg laying ability and because of the friendly and trustful behavior of the bearded hens. Yeah, I think this last chicken coop was very big and special and it's perfect for the end of this video. Thank you for watching this. If you want, you can also follow me on Instagram and please feel free to tell me which of the six chicken coops you did like the most. Yes, and sorry for my bad English. I know it's horrible, but it keeps getting better. I'm learning, learning, learning every day. I promise you.